Subscribe to Books on Toast or one day you'll wake up and your favorite sabzi will be Karela. Hi everyone, welcome to the Books on Toast channel. My name is Anuya and today we're going to talk about zombies. That's correct because we are in the middle of a pandemic and what better thing to discuss in the middle of a pandemic than the plague. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, now I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, Anuya, you hate horror. What are you doing talking about zombies? For some bizarre reason, zombies don't scare me. Actually, that's not true. They do scare me, but they fascinate me a lot more. You know how much I love dystopia. Uh, what I love about zombie dystopia, even though all these books that I'm going to talk about, all of them start at the same point, right? They start at a zombie apocalypse. Where they go from that point is starkly different. It's Really, it's an ode to human imagination. What I also love about it is that zombies, right? They're not just zombies. They're not just the dead reanimated looking around to eat brains. In many places, much like George Romero's classic movies, zombies stand for something. They stand for a decay in our morality. They stand for capitalism. They stand for all the problems we are facing. They stand for a lot of things. And you know, when you say zombie movie or zombie book, you think that it'll always be about this one hero, very hyper masculine doing like swashbuckly things, right? Swashbuckly. But this genre of novels is so much more than that. For once, you know, zombies used to be people. So <laughs> these are not just nameless monsters. These are people who had like, who lived their entire lives before this happened to them. And for another, give them a voice and organization. And they are just, you know, another level of the food chain, something that humans have settled themselves a little too comfortably on top of, right? Yeah. So what happens when that comfort is taken away in a brutal, abrupt manner? That is what we find out when we read these amazing zombie novels. Now, I know this is the Books on Toast channel. I mean, books is in our name. But today, just to keep things interesting, we are going to talk about more than just books. We are going to talk about six books, uh, four movies, two video games and one show. All of them have one thing in common and that thing is Pigeon, no, zombies. Zombies, they have zombies in common. Did it right, did it right? I think you can pretty much guess what we're gonna be talking about. If you want to, you can start uh, guessing in the comment section. But if not, just stick around and I'm gonna give you all of my favorite zombie recommendations. All right, let's do this. Book number one. Now I have spoken about this book already uh, in previous videos, but I will talk about it here anyway, because it is one of the, if not the best zombie novel that I have ever read. And that book is called World War Z by Max Brooks. World War Z is based on the good war an oral history of World War II, which is kind of a collection of reports and conversations from people who witnessed what happened during the Second World War. That is almost exactly what happens in World War Z as well. It's not like a novel that has one hero which takes you from point A to point B. Please ignore that horrible movie that they based on this novel. It was Shady Fakal Tati movie. Nei dekho. Okay, I mean, Brad Pitt hot, but I don't see it. So what this book is, is it's a collection of reports from all over the world. And it's also what I think comes closest to what will actually happen if for some reason a zombie apocalypse does break out in the world. Basically, a series of hard decisions made by people in charge who might or might not deserve to be there uh, at substantial cost. Uh, to human life. It's incredible. It's life-changing. It's a punch in the gut. It is a book you will not forget for a long, long time. It is a book that will make you cry. It is a book that will make you angry. And it is a book where you will find yourself feeling a lot of things that you feel right now as well without elaborating too much. So book number one, World War Z. Book two is another book that I've spoken about before, but sometimes I feel like I don't speak enough about the books that I truly, truly love. And that's why I'm gonna talk about it again and you are gonna listen. It's called Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. Warm Bodies is a story of R, a zombie. It is told from the perspective of the zombie, of it's told from R's perspective. R is a zombie, but he is not just any zombie. He has complex brain function and, and empathy. So he's an anomaly. His whole life changes when he eats the brain of a guy named Perry and kidnaps his girlfriend, Julie. What happens is R and Julie end up forming like this strange friendship which jars everything, you know, the social construct of the world they live in and the supernatural construct of the world they live in. What I love about Warm Bodies is that it explores the fact that zombies were once people, except now they're people 
who uh, can't die, whose bodies are decaying, but they are still somehow going on. So what, what does that mean? What does it mean that R has empathy and that he has actually managed to forge a relationship with a living person? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What follows is a deeply philosophical exploration of being a zombie, something that you would not have expected. Once again, there's a movie based on warm, uh, on warm bodies. Warm zombies. <laughs> I like that. Uh, there's a movie based on warm bodies. It has Teresa Palmer and Nicholas Holt. And I really enjoyed the movie, but it does not capture what it is like to be inside R's head, which is crucial to your understanding of this book. So yes, this one, a zom... rom? <laughs> zom rom? Warm bodies. I love this book so much. Book number three is called The Girl With All The Gifts by M.R. Carey. Girl With All The Gifts, of all the books that I've listed so far, this is the book that will throw you the most because the protagonist is this half human, half zombie kid uh, with genius level IQ whom you can't help but love because she's so cute and smart except uh, if she sees you without her face cage uh, that they give her, she's probably going to eat you. She's, she's going to eat you. She'll know she's eating you, she'll eat you anyway. Now, The Girl With All The Gifts exists in a world where a fungal infection has wiped out most of humanity, which is full of zombies and a bunch of humans are trying to sort of survive in that world, right? And there is this group of kids like Melanie, who are half zombie, half human, who have managed um, to sort of become the next rung in the chain of evolution. So we meet them in this like prison boarding school where these kids are being taught, but also they are being dissected to find out what makes them tick. Um, I know, I know, uh, lots of fun ethical conundrums there for you to ponder over. Now Melanie, uh, our hero, our protagonist, forms this friendship with her teacher, Miss Justino. And then from then on, the story just sort of hurtles down this path that you never expected. And it has an end where I don't want to reveal too much, but it's got it's got a kick ass kick ass end. The girl with also the, the the girl with all the gifts also has a movie, but you know what? Fuck it, forget movies. But just no, just no, no. Book number four, Breathers: A Zombie's Lament. This one is the most darkly comic one of them all. It's a story of Andy Warner, who's a zombie. Uh, just a dead person who just finds himself like alive one day and he's like what the hell happened to me? We don't know. Now unlike all the other books in this book humans are still the majority zombies are a minority and They have no rights no records of their existence. Um, they are denied. They are treated poorly um, They live in uh, Andy for example lives with his parents in their basement where they try to forget that he's there, you know, so it's sort of a very scathing allegory on racism and I think that makes it even more relevant for today's time. But the best thing about it is that it has this innate sense of humor um, that you will really, really enjoy while reading it. It's told completely from the zombies perspective. You really empathize with them and it has an end where you will cheer for the zombie. Now, I never thought that would happen, but that happens <laughs> in this book. And it's, it's amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. It is dark and gory though, so it's not the perfect summer read, but once you start reading it, once you get into it, you will not be able to put this down. Apparently there's also a movie being made with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and I mean, I just haven't the undead suffered enough. Hollywood, why can't you leave them alone, huh? Why can't you leave them alone? Book number five, The Reapers Are the Angels by Alden Bell. Of all the books that we've spoken about, this is the one that sticks to the formula the most. We have a kind of swashbuckly heroine named Temple uh, trying to survive in a dark, decaying world where morality is completely upside down. You are instantly pulled into the pages which are full of really hypnotic pose and you find yourself sort of cringing at every decision that Temple makes and you can't help but wonder what you would do in the same situation where the choice is live or you know just die or do this horrible despicable thing that might haunt you later so temple uh, is on the run from both demons the, the demons inside and demons outside and this is not a book full of hope and optimism if you are looking for that do not read this book this is a book for those like me with an ever questioning darkness inside of them i, I don't know why that book number six feed by mira grant now this one is a series and it's set in a world where human beings are once again trying to survive after the zombie apocalypse. But not in a uh, eat, drink, sleep, 
live kind of way more like you know have a fulfilling life uh, even though there are zombies in this world which means falling in love having a career etc 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 it is a story of political intrigue and journalism set in this world i th i thought that was kick ass like endlessly fascinating the hero heroines of this uh, book are a brother sister pair named georgia and sean whose weirdly incestuous relationship translates into a working relationship as well the two of them run a blog together a political blog together and they get selected to join the trail of a presidential candidate who was you know on his way to the big seat political drama but there are zombies and it feels a lot like what life would be if the coronavirus were to not go away right it feels like um the virus if you personify it and you turn it into a zombie and it resides inside and out what what would that be like that thought is sort of taken to its fruition by mira grand in feed now is the political intrigue the best that it can be not really um is the villain someone you don't see coming not really but there are enough twists and turns in the beginning and there is one explosive end once again can't give it away that will make it all worth it plus i just like this world you know this is not a world where zombies have completely taken over this is a world where humans have figured out a way to survive yes you have to get tested 2000 times a day but uh, so what you know humans can still have lives if they want um and i like that it's not all despair and hopelessness there is still some way to uh, not allow demons to take over your lives if you so choose and now it's time for the movies Four zombie movies. The first movie that I'm going to talk about is Train to Busan. One of the scariest movies that I have seen, but I watched it. I don't know how I did it, but I watched it completely. And that is because of how masterful the movie is. Uh, one of the best zombie movies ever made, according to me. Now, guys, as you know, I am not a big horror watcher, right? I have not watched. the original george romero classics um there's a lot of zombie movies that uh, have slipped through my radar because as you know i get scared i mean how do i put this delicately meri fatti hai guys meri bahut bahut fatti hai uh so how did i end up watching train to busan my husband was watching i walked in i sat down i couldn't take my eyes off it it is that good did i watch some of it like this yes i did you might too but it's worth it train to busan is the story of a father and a daughter It's the daughter's birthday. She wants to go see her mommy. Mommy is in Busan. Father is already like you know works a lot and has disappointed daughter. So father is like I will take her to Busan. And then he gets into a train and of course unbeknownst to him there is a zombie apocalypse outside and slowly everybody in the train is zombie and then it's just a fight for survival. Ah, huh? they have to get to Busan and live. Seems simple, but when there are zombies, it's not. What I love about Train to Busan is how each scene. has conflict each scene makes you sit at the edge of your seat and be like ah kya hoga ab kya hoga ab kya hoga which makes this movie truly truly amazing some of the most popcorn fun you are going to have ever please watch number 1 on the movies list train to busan movie number 2 in our zombies list now we have discussed something that is critically acclaimed now we're going to discuss something that is criti critically not acclaimed for claimed <laughs> just coined that go to trade market like paris hilton that's hot that's how you know i'm old right my references are ancient we are going to talk about army of the dead uh once again i have not watched dawn of the dead uh i've heard it's a great movie but uh, i have not watched it uh, i saw the trailer looked very scary maybe i'll watch it i don't know maybe my husband will watch it i will walk into the room anything can happen anything can happen so we watch army of the dead on tv because the trailer looked really trashy and let me tell you It is really trashy. It's a super trashy movie about zombies in Vegas and a bunch of people who want to go arrange a heist to get a lot of money uh and they have to go through zombies uh, who are all all over Vegas uh, inside casinos outside casinos everywhere there is zombie. Um it is led by that guy who plays uh what's his face on Guardians of the Galaxy yaar kya naam hai uska Batista Dave Batista. Uh, our very own Huma Qureshi is in that movie. uh in a very teeny tiny role but you know it's huma kurishi she shines in everything she does uh army of the dead is full time pass i mean the zombies want brains so you know leave your brains at home ah huh? <laughs>
that way zombies can't get to you uh, uh, watch it on a friday night with some alcohol and some popcorn and it will not disappoint you just don't expect it to be nuanced commentary or anything of that sort it is zack snyder having fun doing manja the next two movies we're going to talk about are zomcoms uh, we did a zomrom in our books now we're doing a zomcom and these are two of the funniest movies i have ever seen and i hope that you watch and discover uh, and enjoy just as much as i did the first one is of course uh, shaun of the dead edgar wright's you know brilliant movie about a zombie apocalypse in london uh, it tells you the story of shaun a directionless man just going about in life gets stumped by his girlfriend his friends are like get a shit together shaun and uh, he goes to a pub to get drunk and then the next morning is the zombie apocalypse now shaun's direction in life has come and that direction is to not get overwhelmed by the pack of zombies threatening to take him down in london it is one of the funniest movies you will ever watch and it is also a great lesson in filmmaking and edgar wright is amazing and uh, it's movie one in his three flavors of cornetto trilogy uh, the second one is hot fuzz another brilliant movie has nothing to do with zombies but so so funny so 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 funny please watch this movie it is going to entertain the hell out of you and might also teach you a thing or two along the way the second movie that we're going to talk about is zombie land it has jesse eisenberg emma stone and woody harrelson or kya chahiye dosto mujhe to kuch nahi chahiye it is one of the fucking funniest movies i have ever watched zombie land 2 is also very funny but zombie land 1 is the best uh it's a story of this geeky kid who is basically driving around the united states trying to find a safe sanctuary and the people he meets along the way we are done with six novels and four movies so it's time for two video games now you're like anuya when did you start playing video games in the lockdown honey in the lockdown there was nothing fucking else to do so i was like let's try this also time to hai hi ha chalo karte hain Zombie video games is the whole thing. Okay, we all know about Resident Evil. Those movies terrified me. I watched one in the theater. I spent the next three nights thinking that zombies were trying to get me. So yeah, there are like a fuck ton of them, and I am not even going to pretend to know all about them. I don't know. I only know about these two games um, that I have played, and I'm going to talk about them because somewhere I do believe that these games changed my life. They changed my life, guys. My whole life was changed. Now if you own a PlayStation then you already know about these games because they have won a bunch of awards and they are The Last of Us 1 and The Last of Us 2. Uh I started playing Last of Us in the lockdown once again. What else is there to do in a pandemic than play games about a pandemic, am I right? <laughs> the Last of Us uh, is set in a future where a fungal infection has wiped out um humanity save for these few pockets and um there are zombies everywhere there are runners there are stalkers there are shamblers there are clickers there are like a lot of zombie types and they're all equally terrifying they are scary as shit uh and let me tell you this do not play last of us uh, at night i played it exclusively in the day because it just freaked me out so much at night both last of us 1 and 2 are um told from the first one is told from the perspective of joel who has to take this little girl named ellie cross country um because that's his mission kind of like you know the movie transporter and uh, somewhere down the line and this is not really a spoiler but knows this he finds out that ellie is immune and the idea of course is to figure out why ellie is immune and if that immunity can be channeled into a vaccine that could save the rest of the world uh joel and ellie start off as uh, you know reluctant allies and then slowly a bond forms between them and you i mean you kind of sort of see that coming right but i don't know there is just something about these games that i can't i can't tell you there is just something that stays with you sticks with you you feel these two people they're so bad i mean they do such horrible things throughout these two games and yet you find yourself rooting for them it's bizarre um last of us 2 of course has a lot of controversy surrounding it because of two decisions that they made and again i don't want to reveal those two decisions because they might spoil the games for you but exactly for those two decisions i love the game uh, just you know the problem with last of us 2 is i cannot discuss it without giving things away but it is set in the same world it sort of takes the story forward uh, you meet joel and ellie again uh, they're a little older 
and oh jesus and it let's just say it makes you, it puts you in shoes that you did not expect to be put into and it tells you a whole other different story and i swear if we could just you know live in these simulations it would get very hard for us to fight with each other that's yeah we would just it would end all the conflicts of the world if people could just see each other's perspective and that's what last of us 2 does last of us 2 changed my life i um i was on the fence about video games until then and then this video game came along and it just i cannot tell you how amazing this game is and i just i can't believe that i haven't played video games for so long because oh boy are they amazing or what and now finally the one tv show that i was talking about bunch of tv shows for this they're not all very good there are a lot of zombie shows on tv huh guys uh anyway the show that i'm going to talk about is probably the most obvious choice when it comes to zombie shows and that is the walking dead uh the walking dead especially season one was helped by frank darbon frank darbon is the same guy who gave us shawshank redemption green mile some truly truly amazing amazing movies uh the story of his departure is a fun story to read if you have the time for that but Season 1 of Walking Dead is almost near perfect. It tells the story of Rick Grimes, this cop who was in a coma when the zombie apocalypse happens and then he wakes up and the world is shit, right? And there are zombies everywhere and he has to find his wife and son and gone around looking for them and then there are zombies that he has to deal with etc etc etc. Uh it also has a very handsome uh what's his name guy from Punisher. Mereko bhi yaad nahi uska naam aap google kar lo. Wo bhi hai. Bahut sexy hai wo. Uski biwi bhi ekdam taka taka hai. uh okay now i kind of sound like a creepy man so ignore all of that and uh, watch uh, the walking dead uh one of the most definitive zombie shows on tv right now of course it just sort of lost its way along the you know 2000 seasons that they made it do and after a while you're just like all right calm down and uh, you know it doesn't have to be so grim and i mean trust me it's very very grim but if you just want to dip your toes you can watch season 1 and you know read about the rest uh, it's it's fine there are of course uh, comic books that the walking dead series is based on you can get your hands on those as well but you must must watch season 1 of the walking dead honorable mention to the kingdom i haven't yet watched the show but it's a korean period drama with zombies i mean <laughs> sounds amazing gonna watch yeah as soon as soon as i finish kissing boom 3 All right, that was our collection uh of zombie pop culture from us to you with love. All of them personally vetted by yours truly. Now if like me you are afraid of horror, then uh my recommendation is that you first read zombies and then graduate to watching zombies because they be scary, guys. But ek baat main aapko bata do, uh I like this uh to uh, aap bhi dekh lijiye, zombie dekhenge. <laughs> आप भी देख लीजिए वाह 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 इर्शाद ओके ऑसम आई होप यू एंजॉय दैट वीडियो एंड आई होप यू एंजॉय दैट लिस्टिकल एवरीथिंग दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑल द बुक्स एट लीस्ट आर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो नाउ आई हैव स्टार्टेड टू रियलाइज दैट यू गाइस जस्ट रीड द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स एंड स्किप वाचिंग द वीडियो इफ यू आर डूइंग दैट अम देन मेबी आई नीड टू स्टॉप पुटिंग थिंग्स इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स आई वांट टू थिंक अबाउट दिस बट इन द मीनवाइल uh please read keep reading keep reading different genres keep exploring various types of books you don't have to just read literary fiction there is so much fiction in this world that isn't just award winning fiction but is equally good if not better if you start just reading good zombie books you can spend the rest of your life reading them and they will not be over if you enjoyed this video please share this video please subscribe to our channel it is such a good channel and please like this video because i don't know youtube has that feature so let's use it ha huh? let's use it all right everybody stay safe wear masks uh please get vaccinated and uh, we'll see you next week